welcome to another episode of the 72 Pin Connect. With us this week, we have Adam. Hello, I'm not usually first. (laughs) (laughs) Josh. Hi. And the man who just flew across the country, Tom. Shouldn't we call this like Nintendo 64 Pin Connector? Because it's episode what? 64. Oh, oh, right, guys? Like the best controller ever made, the Nintendo 64 controller. That it's, is not a true statement. It's the pick-your-own-play-style yeah, no. controller, you know? Instead of a choose-your-own-adventure, you choose your own grip. <laughs> didn't, they have, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't they have... Didn't they make you use two of them if you wanted to do that special mode in 007? Domino? Oh, yeah. I used to play That's Domino. Crazy. It was crazy. amazing. Is that their first, like... Hey, you know what? We should have two separate controls. Just see how people like it. People hated it. Okay, we're gonna go with that for our future systems. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally, totally how it worked out. Well, it was the first ever twin stick. Well, I shouldn't say ever, yeah. but in console wise, it was the first time you could really twin stick. I suppose so. Though I think th- so. Though I would say I'm I'm holding this right now. You have two buttons and two joysticks. That's all you got. That's all you need, man. How are you doing that? Shoot and then aimbot. Um, well, you don't have two buttons. You have three buttons. You have A, B, and Z, each to a hand. But how a, are you B using the Z? joystick? How are you using A, B, and Z? On Z, Z is a trigger. A, B, and Z. Like over here? Aren't they over here? I gotta look no, this Z's, up again. Z's a trigger. They're, they're, they're off to the side, right? And then that would yeah. be, that's so weird. That does not feel good at all. I think really what it, it is. It was is weird, but it was designed for people with more appendages than we have. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I wonder Nintendo's why they decided to make it look like, like a plane. Yeah. Like, why did they make it look like a fighter plane? Maybe it was like, like Star Fox was a good game. <laughs> it's kind of rolled the, with the design. <laughs> the only big issue <laughs> with the N64 controller. The, the only big uh-huh. issue with the N64 controller that I saw was that. When you look at it initially, you de- you never grabbed it by the middle and then the right side. It was always the left and the right side. So you had this, you know, big appendage hanging down in the middle of, of where you're putting your hands. And oh, everybody yeah, right. would grab it like that. By default, you had to actually train people. No, no, no. You grab the middle and the right side. Right. Um, I yeah. wonder why they didn't just put, like, two Z buttons. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. Weird. I don't know. Like, it seems like a weird development. Like, there's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the guy with the controller kept coming up to the boss, be like, "How does this look?" Like, yeah, just go away, chat. We're busy trying to like work this thing out. And like, okay. And he goes, he's like, "Do you have time now?" He's like, "No." I was like, "I'm just gonna put a fucking another handle in the center." This guy's not even talking <laughs> to me. Like, like, how's this big boss? And he's like, "That's fine. Go away." And then they just did it. And like, whose idea was this? Like, I cleared it. I don't remember clearing that. I never would have cleared that. It's like uh, it's like he, he, trying to go through old email. He's just hitting approve on fucking everything to get it out of yeah. his inbox. He sees the controller three months later. He's like, oh fuck, what the hell did I do? Like, where was that? I was in somewhere because like it looks <laughs> like it was created by accident. Like, I, I seriously doubt they got through it and they're like, oh yeah, that's gonna work. <laughs> it, it feels good in your hand, though. I'm not saying it feels functional, but to actually just hold, it feels really good. It's comfy. Yeah, I, feel like, yeah, I mean, it wasn't so bad, but like it's asymmetrical. Uh, you know, it's like an asymmetrical little controller. If you took out the sides, you'd just have, you know, a Joy-Con. Eh, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> if you just but took I mean, out the sides, they got worse because I mean, after that, they did the fucking GameCube controller. Yeah, they're. They, that was, yeah. dude, the that's, GameCube that's controller another, was fucking great. That's oh, another controller that's really comfortable to hold, but the buttons are stupid. Yeah, I, I love yeah, the buttons. Love the buttons. The, the buttons big ass awesome, A yeah. button is great. No, I get the idea, but it's a stupid practice. Just because you use it the most doesn't mean it needs to take up 80% of the fucking area. So, <laughs> so the whole reason Nintendo designed it that way is that they wanted you to be able to tell what button was what without having to look at the controller. Because if you feel a PlayStation controller... Every button feels exactly the same. If you feel an Xbox controller, all the buttons feel exactly the same. You can get tripped up. Most gamers, especially those who have been around the block a few times, won't get tripped up, but it does happen. If you don't Uh, have spatial awareness, maybe. (laughs) Yeah, but I mean, like... I don't have spatial awareness. Well, you have a keyboard, and your keyboard, they're pretty much all the same. So, like, come on. Like... (laughs) 
I'm, it's, I'm just it's saying, still, like, on, it's still on a GameCube seems... controller. You can you can grab that thing and know exactly where every button is without even looking at the thing. It's they solving all a problem that they made up. <laughs> yeah, and the, like, but the and... thing is, is you still don't know which one's the Y or X unless you like add like braille to it or something like you're not going to read the indents the, the indents exactly use Dvorak. you know you're yeah, wrong you the big use Dvorak. <laughs> <laughs> idiot. i would like a keyboard where all the buttons are different sizes so that i don't get them confused in my fingers well really it's me it's a height thing so i need all that. i need all the buttons to be a different height as well yeah, because that'd like, be nice because I'll never know which button I'm hitting unless like it's a different height because they're all so level. It's weird. You see, that's why I have a speaker <laughs> on my keyboard. So when my finger hovers over a key, it says the letter to me. <laughs> it's like H, H, H. It just keeps repeating it. H, <laughs> H, G, G, G. <laughs> and it's also it's why I don't have I a spell check. Text to speech all I am again. totally, totally building this mechanical keyboard right now. I'm writing up the design plans. We're going to make this shit happen. All right, cool. <laughs> I'll just send it out to a quick prototyping, see what we can get for you. <laughs> Those keycaps will be the most expensive keycaps ever created. Yes. <laughs> but I'll have, I'd like, I like, I'm envisioning them all to have their own um, like motion detector per, and then also nice. have a speaker per, for no reason other than <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I also think that the tops of the keys should all have an, a screen on them. Like I like this idea, just in case you, you want to change. Yeah, and you can upload whatever images you want for all of the keys. That's just in case. Idea. Well, I'm that way you can this. switch to Dvorak if you want. Or, or you could watch videos there. on your keyboard. I, I, yeah, I want to I wanna watch different video on YouTube, <laughs> YouTube videos yeah. simultaneously. You know, every, every, key, every key has got a different Twitch stream. Yeah. Although what would be really cool is if you can make them all link together and then the whole screen is like, it's like a little screen down here with like the whole Twitch stream, so everything like, like dancing around and the whole time you're going h h h g c y you all see right, so I'd these use are keyboard. all terrible ideas okay yeah well i mean it's not like Nintendo did any better it just gets worse it's gotten very worse <laughs> it just keeps getting worse I, I i i'm like playing a lot on the switch and i just I just can't get behind the controller. I just can't get behind any aspect of the controller. It's it's like so boxy and annoying mm. and like i want to play it portable like the worst part about it is the the d-pad and the buttons and the joysticks and and the r and l's it's the whole controller it's awful <laughs> i can't mm. like it, it seems okay, like it's designed to look good but not necessarily feel good. i the only thing i don't like about the joy cons um is i i don't like them in split mode right i don't like playing no, with an yeah. individual joy con it's see i awful. love that that's the only thing about it i like because i can be relaxed just kick back on the couch and play oh no 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 the the split controller mode when you're using two of them oh totally about that i'm totally about comfy gaming i'm sold no but like let's say you're playing mario kart and you've got two pair of joy cons right and right. you have four people who want to play. So oh, you each get like uh, the one yeah, the side. Half. It's yeah. fucking right. annoying. The L and R buttons are are honestly painful to use. Um, and the lack of a real D pad, I get why they did it so you could split them, but the lack of a D pad just kills me. I, it's the first Nintendo system to not have a real D pad unless you buy a different controller. I picture like the Switch to be used by really, really buff guys that can't get their hands close together because their biceps are too big. <laughs> <laughs> so they're like, this is perfect. And they're just like, yeah, that's, their the, like oh, that's, that's the key Nintendo market. demographic right there. Yeah, for sure. Just bodybuilders are their target market. That's what I'm imagining. <laughs> You know, but like again, like they're so boxy and weird, even on the actual Switch when they're both snapped in. It's just like the main way I've played it you know portable you know N nintendo ds mode as i like to call it um you know it's just like the like i can't it, the the thumbstick on the bottom is too far to like reach down and move like the camera i have to take my hand off of that to move the camera around i have to like come take my hand off of that to hit any d-pad i can't thumb roll anything it's just like really it's not super elegant yeah see i, I mean i think a pro it, controller no, would be way better i would use that mobile no problem i i don't have it's an issue fine. with that. I, I only play it mobile. I have no issues with the Joy Cons attached. I it's don't like the bump. Fine, but it's not like that great. It's not like like it's okay at best. It's just my hands slide around. It's just 
I don't know. I, I, will, I just can't I get say, behind it. It's not perfect. I, it's so far from perfect. I, I will say this. As far as Nintendo designed controllers go, the Joy-Cons are probably the ones that are nearing the bottom of my list as far as the controllers that I actually like to use. Um, okay. I can see it that. It just... Like, uh, even even the, the Wiimote, even though it was really minimalistic and purely based around function, it felt decent to hold, right? It wasn't right, I great agree. by any means, but for the games that used it, it, it got the job done and it didn't... It worked, yeah. It wasn't painful. Uh, the Joy-Cons... I, eh? Eh? If, if the yeah. games I was playing weren't so fun, uh, <laughs> I'd probably hate it a lot more. Yeah, I agree. And that's and that's really what I'm yeah. getting at. I think I need to get a pro controller. That's yeah. my big thing. Like uh like I've been playing some of these games and I think they'd be much better on a pro controller. Well what I was gonna say is on the bus I use it, but most of the time I'm docked. I always use the pro. There's no other way. I pick up the pro and that's what I use. I will not use the Joy Cons if I can use I mean the if pro. you've already got the pro controller, there's really no reason to use the Joy Cons unless you're mobile. Dude, the pro is better than that thing. The pro feels good. No. No, dude. The 8 bit do <laughs> SF30 Pro gamepad is the only thing I use while docked. It is so great. But I, I'm also <laughs> a fan of dogbone controllers. I would rather have the flat, thin dogbone controller uh, than uh, something with like actual curves to it, right? I, I want. I, I want this. I, I want I, a flat controller. I, I don't want. I, I only don't dogs go for bones. Real gamers like curves. Damn. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Holy shit. Somebody clip that. I need that That's in my perfect. life. Somebody fucking clip that. <laughs> but um, um the, anyway, like no, no, like okay, so so the biggest thing is like I've been playing Mario and I've recently jumped into Zelda. Like I, that's the newest one that I jumped into and I did that just this weekend. And and the the thing is is I I, I don't have any comfort. And those games are something that I want to enjoy and sit and like soak in but the whole time i'm like fumbling around with this like square box and it's like sliding through my hands and i hate it but again going into zelda it's just so fun that i don't care <laughs> you know a lot yeah. like what tom was saying like i got like i wasn't quite sure about how i'd like this one mainly because like I don't know if Mario was overhyped for me. I still like to think it was because, like, it was just again so insanely hyped. Um, but like, Zelda lived up to the hype immediately. Mm. Like immediately going into it, like you come out, you get your Nintendo DS, as I'm as I'm calling it, because I think it's <laughs> hilarious to think that Zelda that uh, Link's running around in uh, you know talking to Zelda through Nintendo DS. Like, I just think no, no, it's, it's a Wii U game. Pad. It's a Wii U pad. It's yeah, a Wii, I, Wii U. I, yeah, it looks more like Actually, that. Yeah, they had to redesign what they were going to make the Sheikah slate look like because of the Switch. It looked oh, almost really? exactly like a Wii U gamepad, and they had to change it. <laughs> it looks like okay. It looks like a Wii U gamepad, like easily. But it's just so funny because he's just like wandering around and like it's so great. Like you get your your, your Wii U gamepad and you and you and you come out of that little cave thing, and then the world's there and you, everything's there and it looks epic and expansive. You're like should, like is this you know what I'm going to experience? It's the first time in a long time that um you know you, there's always that big reveal in games, especially epics, especially roamers, like anything that has like a like like an expansive world like there's always that big reveal like this is what you get to do you know and like <laughs> this is the first time i actually got that and i got excited again that big volcanoes in the distance i get like that first like exploration feeling that i have i haven't had in a long time we're like oh, what's that like oh what's mm -hmm. that oh it's over there <laughs> we're, and it's like, we're and gonna I go just, on an adventure yeah, yeah, and and I look out and I'm like, this is what these games are supposed to be. And like, as soon as I do it, I start immediately just screwing around. Like, I jump out a wall and he starts climbing the wall. I'm like, what the? He's climbing this wall, and I'm like amazed. And I jump at a tree and he climbs the tree. And like, I'm like whacking at grass and the grass is cutting. I'm like, I could do anything. And it's fantastic. There's actually I, a really funny story. Um, Miyamoto, his first time he got a hold of the game, all he did for an hour was climb trees. And then he went back to him. He's like, this is perfect. 
This is perfect. <laughs> Ship the great. entire game because these trees are perfectly climbable. Well, I, what I like, didn't I realize. Love, oh, good. I love to make fun of Miyamoto because it's just like it's so childlike the way he approaches game design. Like you've you've got like companies like fucking fucking EA and Ubisoft and anything Valve makes, and they're approaching it with like play testing and A B testing, and they've got data and graphs, and they've got mm. psychologists brandishing this this masterpiece of of uh, an enjoyable experience to ship out to consumers for sixty dollars on the shelf, and you've got Miyamoto who walks in. He's like, "Oh wow, I can climb all the trees. This is the best <laughs> game ever. Go ahead and ship it." <laughs> yeah, sure there was a little bit. I mean, there was definitely that. more game than of that. the year. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's that level. Like, I feel like there's a lot more. Um, like, this is just this is it's probably not a big spoiler, but does Link grow up in this one too? Is that like? No. It's kind of an every Zelda thing. No. He doesn't like age in this. Okay. Well, like right out of the gate, I kind of felt like childish because I was just running out and I was just like kind of like just doing whatever. One thing I did is I cut down a tree. I didn't realize you can cut down trees. And then they fall down and they're actual physical objects you can interact with. And you can like, I just like instantly just cut down a tree, roll it down a hill, and just watched it tumble. I'm like, this is great. It is I just think- pause with Nintendo Polish. They built this game with all these systems. And they put the mm-hmm. rules in place where all the systems can work with each other. And it's amazing. Well, that's so cool. The thing is, is, this is the part... Okay, so when I get into games, I love mechanics. Like That's my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. Getting into Mario, like I expected more mechanics, if that makes sense. But like it's more of... Uh, there's more things to interact with. There's the, It's very mechanical, and there's all sorts of crazy things that you can do. But like, I don't know if I'm like not far enough along or what. But like, nothing is like felt like new or fresh to me in a way. Like, expect like I got the I, I got a couple things where there was like, you know, all the new like different things I can play as, and I thought that was cool. But like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like this Zelda game specifically, just out of the gate, felt like something fresh to me. I don't. I don't know what it was. Maybe it's, maybe I didn't look or get that much hyped on that one. I don't know. Well, it's because it's Mario... That, oh, sorry, Adam, go. I was going to say, it's got that emergent gameplay. That's that's the the whole part of it, where you've got all these systems that interact with each other, and it and it brings events in the game that happen organically because they're not scripted events. They're not story events. They're not levels. It's just right. stuff that happens to happen with all these systems, you know, right. interacting with each other. It's something that it's, EA tried to do with Rift a while ago, and they just nailed in this. And also, Mario didn't bring anything new to the table. They brought in new gimmicks for Mario, but mechanically, right. it's, it was all the same. It was really well done, but it's all the same. Yeah, Zelda, I mean, it's solid. It's, Zelda's climbing is the that. game changer. I mean, there's some um, pretty cool man. stuff. I mean, I wouldn't. I would say like even just the magnet out of the gate. Like I got the magnet, you get that right away. And just I was just thinking of all the crazy things you can do with this magnet, and I proceeded to do a bunch of weird shit with this magnet. And it was like it was really fun, and I I, I like the creative aspect of it. And I've I've seen some things that you get, and I'm thinking like like I, you get your mind like kind of thinking like oh what can I do with this? What if I combine this with this? And what if I try to do this? And then this happens, and then you like the whole time you're just like imagining all these things that you can do and mm-hmm. i didn't get that with mario like it was cool and there was a bunch of cool yeah. like silly things you can do but like i didn't get my mind spinning and that's what i really yeah. love in some games is when you get that opportunity but i don't think you can do that without like a sandbox like a true sandbox yeah game. there's certain types yeah. of games that works with mario's never been one of those types of games right no. i agree so with with Breath of the Wild, the climbing is really the gimmick, right? Uh, they added climbing because they, they just had to. The world wouldn't work well otherwise. It wouldn't feel good. It would feel artificially limiting if you walked up to a mountain and you're like, well, uh, I've got a mountain in the way. That sucks. Right? <laughs> right. The, the whole game would fall apart at that point. Um, I think the game changer in Breath of the Wild is the interaction of various game mechanics, right? So let's say you're you're trying to climb a cliff. Well, you can be a pansy about it and grab onto the wall and climb a cliff. Maybe maybe you get fancy and you bring along some food to help you climb it or some gear to help you climb faster. Or you can chop down a tree, 
throw some metal by it so it gets hit by lightning. It creates a giant fire. Then you jump into the fire and open up your par- parachute so the, the gust of wind will carry you up the side of the mountain. That's a thing you can do in Zelda. That's totally a thing I did. And the whole game just lets you do it. Even the, the proctored little challenges of the, the shrines. You know, I, I have seen amazing speedruns where these people just completely bypass the entire point of a puzzle or a mechanic or right. a cool gimmick the game's trying to show you just because they can. And the game said, no, nah, that's, that's all right. You can do yeah. it that way. See, I think I think that's the big separation for me in my in, like I like to do a bunch of really wacky shit. I like to try weird things, but I think it's just you know it really just comes down like it, don't get me wrong, I love Mario. Like I really do. I keep going back to it. I keep enjoying it. It's more of a hunting, finding, completionist game for me than it is a a wacky sandbox experience. Right. And I expected it to be a wacky sandbox experience because there's a literal second level sandbox. Right. <laughs> you know, the desert level or whatever. But it's, uh, it, it, I guess I expected something different than what it was. It's more of a collect, like a really fun collect a thon. Right. Than yeah, it is. It's, it, it's, 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 a, a it's, typical, it's a typical 3D platformer. Right. Will, and it's great. It does it but, great. Yeah. I will say this yeah. about Zelda. Come back to us in a month and a half, two months, and let me know what you think. Um, right. You're not going to think the game's any less good. But to me, anyway, Zelda fell off pretty hard once I got to the end game. And okay, it, I can see that. And then at that point, it turns into what you're talking about with Mario, and I'm just kind of like, eh, it's great. I'm not degrading it, but I think I've had my fill. Right. I mean, yeah, I'll definitely I, play through it. it. It just seems like, like it's like from... Mario, like I watched so many speed runs of Mario and so many crazy things that happen, especially Mario 64. And like, there's so many like weird, crazy things you can do. And I don't know why I was expecting like you to be doing outlandish things in this one. Cause everyone's like, you could do anything when I was, you know, getting hyped up for it origi- originally. Mm-hmm. And that's where it came down. You know, that's where it really fell apart for me. It was really more of like, I expected more like some, some outrageous, crazy things in my head. And when I got there, it wasn't much. But, um, I mean, you don't have to have those crazy mechanics and those crazy, like, things to, like, just have a great story. Like, I finally jumped back into um, Divinity 2. We, me and me and Tom played a little bit of that uh, at one point, and then we ended up playing it again with uh, Dark Soul and my wife again. It was really fun. I I liked it. There was one, but we play with mods. And I don't know I was if you going to say, I saw you guys installing a bunch of mods. Yeah, there was 10. He installed like 10. <laughs> nice. But it, it didn't feel too much different. The one big thing that was a massive improvement for me is they skipped the boat in the beginning. <laughs> oh. So you just got right into the, all like the cool, like, you know, killing and fighting and, and, you know, role playing and stuff. It was really, really, really cool. I really enjoyed that, like, I really enjoyed it going in this time. I, I think I think I'll probably be playing a lot more of it. And hopefully I will be playing a lot more of it with Tom too. <laughs> but uh one thing he did add on that on those mod lists is he added um he added more players. So you can actually play with like eight people or something like that. Oh. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Yeah. It's so that would be a really nice mod. So maybe we can continue off of this save with everybody and then just have a whole bunch of people playing and that, I'm I think okay that'd with be, that. I think that'd be super dope. Yeah, I'll probably end up getting that but, game by mid-year, I would think. I got to get through that. Yeah. I, I really like it so far. I'm just, I I do not regret my purchase. Outside of my norms like, though, all my time's going to fucking near cuz I got to beat that damn game. <laughs> yeah. Well, how many times do you got to beat that yeah, damn game? Say, you don't just have to beat well, the game. You have to beat the game four a lot. times. Though there's Is 20 four? there's 27 endings, but like our friend <laughs> Dobby got one today where he walked away from a mission objective and mm-hmm. it was just this thing like, "Oh, bloody blah and bloody blah went the wrong way. Game over." Like it was a very key <laughs> time. So it was really okay. funny how the game has all these endings they wrote. They're not like finale endings, but all these fun little jabs of like hey you fucked up in a really cool way here's an ending mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like if this was to actually happen which i thought was kind of cool yeah but are you really you um, need to finish that 
So since you've been more into it, then is it Boulder's Gate? Then is that what it is, well, Josh? Well, I mean, out of the gate, it's Boulder's Gate. Okay. Uh, like, I was just making sure since I had more time that it still <laughs> no, no, stays. No. It was it was it was Boulder's Gate. It's it was Boulder's Gate before I like when we played with Tom and I launched the first thing and I was choosing my stats. I'm like, oh, this is Boulder's Gate. This is great. And I got into it. And we played through a, a good chunk of it. I'm like, yep, it's even more Boulder's Gate. It's a hundred percent. That's okay. what it is. I was just it's making just sure really it stayed good, with it. Yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. Um, I mean, there's a whole bunch of really cool like crazy things you can do like with different like spells like tom was saying that i i didn't get to at that point where we were like we're like i was shooting a fireball at a barrel and it explodes and then fires everywhere and things burn to death and it's great because you're like making like you're kind of making traps you're making like you're dealing with the environment a little bit more uh it would be really nice to see um see how deep you can go like can you fire like a water spell at the ground and then shoot like electricity spell at the ground like you can yeah so that's the sort of stuff that like i want to see i know i noticed the weird thing is this poison conducts electricity and i'm like that's interesting <laughs> i don't know like I, so yeah it, it's pretty cool like so far just like fighting things i want to see where i want to get off this little like beach area and see more of the world maybe see like different biomes like maybe a forest area would be cool or like a snow area any anything other than just this beach would be great because this is all i've seen so far um but it's cool it's really cool i i'm, I'm excited to continue and yeah, then I... uh, yeah that's pretty much i mean that's really all i've been all i've been playing really just been having a really good time with it yeah, I, yeah, I can't wait to get back in. Did you get anything this week, Tom? Yeah, I did, okay. actually. I, oh, I right. did. I uh, Between this week and last week, I actually got a, a decent amount of gaming in. Um, this week, uh, I'll, I'll go into that last, because that's, that's a big one. Um, so, did my first look at Enter the Gungeon. Bought that a couple weeks ago. Oh, nice. Um, what do you think? Jesus fucking christ that game is hard <laughs> yeah dude, everything about easy the game is difficult like there's there's no easy mode there's no like i'm i'm going through wikis i'm reading about item builds and who to play with and how to basically make the game easier so i can get past the second floor of the the gungeon and i <laughs> i can't you the answer good. yeah the answer is fuck you get good uh yeah. so it's great um I love it. The soundtrack is fantastic. It's a yeah, it bullet is. hell dungeon crawler uh, with the guns of Borderlands. Um, I got a on one of my first playthroughs. I got a giant shotgun shell that fired shotguns, and when the shotguns hit walls or an enemy, they also fired. Um, That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking ridiculous. The whole game yeah. is just ridiculous and fun. Um, I I bought a gun and I wanted to see oh how does this fire how does this shoot so I stood in the shop and I started firing and the oh. shopkeeper pulls out a big fucking ass gun and says all right everything is like double the price now get the fuck out of my shop I was like holy shit dude I didn't <laughs> oh, know uh, I'm sorry so sorry I didn't mean to um but yeah it's it's a lot of fun I highly highly recommend it I love it on the Switch because I can you know it's knock a out a run Switch game. It's it's so good portable. I can knock out a run. I can die real quick. Uh, and that's it. I was um, mildly disappointed with that game. Really? Really? I'm really I, I got spoiled with Isaac and also with, with the interactions. Um, yes, the synergies. Yeah. I love synergies in these type of games when you can get different systems or game or items and stuff. I like to see when item A plays off item B and affects item C. Right. I like yeah, when yeah, that happens. I can see that. I don't know how this much doesn't this do does that. that later on. Like I haven't oh, seen all the items I guess that's stuff, true. But yeah, I'm assuming I haven't most got far of them don't interact in that way. But I think the novelty more is just seeing all the guns and the gameplay itself. Um, I think it's more fun than the Binding of Isaac. Yes, just the combat in general is more fun right off the bat. It's way more interactive with the that. rolling yeah. and shit yeah. and flipping tables yeah. and. Yeah, I, think I, it's I got a great game. It's just different. I gotta say, I'm loving the Switch for roguelikes. Like, yeah. I, I love roguelikes right. in general, like playing on the PC, but the PC is something where I want to sit down, I want to get involved in the game, I want to play something, you know, big and long, or something mm -hmm. super intensive, like uh, Doom or, or something else. 
Right. Um, and the Switch is great for the pick it up and drop it games. Um, the the way back been, and relax. The, I don't know. Something, something about laying on the couch playing. Being on a couch makes dungeon. roguelikes awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I can see that. Um, I mean, get, um, get has been heroes. I, that is I a brutally hard I don't think I'd one. like it. I love I've that watched a, I've watched a lot of gameplay. I've read a lot of reviews, and I think I would hate it. So, um, yeah. Um, speaking of get good and dying all the time and fuck this game is hard. Um, oh, played some Mario Odyssey. Oh. oh. That's not what really? I thought was coming. I did not think that either. I'm playing it currently. Yeah, there is... <laughs> I have 502 moons. So yeah, oh, wow. you've hit, you've hit I, good, good mode. That's a lot I, of moons. I, I, can't, I will not spoil anything on this podcast. All I will say is it is the Dark Souls of Mario levels. Oh, okay. there it is. That's it's, probably, yeah. So how, oh, is that how many... Shit. Is that how many moons are in the game? 502? No. It's a thousand, no. I think, right? Is it, it's essentially I, unlimited because of the way the store system works. No. Oh, okay. I think... I think like collectible though it's eight thirty. I want to say the the game's fucking massive. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, I you, saw that you there was something. Good. I saw there was something that you can get at nine hundred ninety nine moons. I thought there was something. There's something special that happens about there, but I don't know, and I didn't look at it because I didn't want to spoil it. But it yeah, could be. The only thing it, it could be just like clickbait. <laughs> you know, nothing it could be there. But from what I saw, there was something, but we'll see. The only thing I've heard is the, that 500 is kind of your mark. Uh, but then again, I haven't really looked into it because, like you, I'm trying to avoid spoilers. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, first going through Mario Odyssey, it's the tutorial. It's the training. It's so your, you know, grandmother that's near death or, or your kid brother that's like a year and a half old and still eats the controller can complete a Mario game from start to credit roll. Um, right. Everything in between is good, and there's some platforming challenges, but it's not too hard. It's it's a good balance. It's a Mario Sunshine style of difficulty. Uh, you get to 500. Um, Jesus fucking Christ. Fuck that game. <laughs> Dude, just 250. I will beat it. I, I haven't beat it. I haven't beat it. I've been playing this at least four times per day, this level, for the past two fucking weeks, and I cannot beat it. It is a oh, wow. fucking difficult level. Um, and it's a gauntlet. It, there's, there's no checkpoints. It is start that to finish. Super fun. Do not make a mistake. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's some of the best platforming I, I have ever experienced in gaming. Uh, it's great. Um, I'm, so, super hyped now. I'm super hyped now. Yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grind out Mario super hard <laughs> in the next yeah. couple days. <laughs> it's so good. Um, <laughs> Played some Rocket League, uh, and I finally saw how Panic Button uh, is putting stuff like Rocket League and Doom and other games on the Nintendo Switch. Um, they actually uh, internally render the game at about three pixels by four pixels and then blow it up to a 1080p screen um, mm. to get it to run at 30 to 60 frames per second, depending on the game. Um, what I've seen in videos of Doom and what I've personally experienced in Rocket League is that it will dynamically change your resolution. So the game will get super fucking grainy if a lot of stuff's going on or if you get too close really? to a lot of opponents really fast. Oh. Um, it, it actually kind of fucks with you if the ball is far away and you're trying to you know, get a good angle on it or see where it's bouncing uh, because the game just runs in a super low res mode. It runs well. Um, and even even with four players, um, I didn't notice any slowdown. Initially, I did. I don't know if they patched that out, but uh, uh, we ran four player Rocket League against bots, and uh, it it works really well. All split screen. It was it was fine. That's impressive um, because I've noticed um, degrade with the Xbox One on split screen, just two players. I've yeah, noticed yeah, a right, hit in performance. Same, yeah. same on PlayStation. Yes. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't look great at all. I mean, A, the screen is tiny and dinky because, right, you've got a four-way split going. Uh, mm -hmm. But B, it's also doing this, like, uh, resolution, like, <clears throat> subsampling there, too. So the game just mm -hmm. turns into a mess of grainy soup. Um, <laughs> Sounds uh, tasty. It's, it's not grainy awful. Soup. Like, it's it, for it's, dinner. As far <laughs> as... 
as far as what's important in Rocket League, right? Performance is always the most important thing. You want the game to run well. If it doesn't, you're missing shots. The game's not fun to play. Um, so the trade-off is it can't look good all the time, and I guess that's okay. But they did the same thing to Doom, which I don't own on the Switch and probably won't buy on the Switch because I like Doom. It's beautiful and runs really well, and I don't play first-person shooters with a controller anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest game I've gotten into, I started this two weeks ago. I blame our good friend and friend of the show, Bird. Uh, fuck you, Bird, for getting me into this. Uh, I have put nearly, I think I've put 12 hours into Gwent, the nice. Witcher card game in the past two weeks. Um, it is fucking great. It is amazing. I, I got really into Hearthstone back in the day, and the uh, the best card I could use was, was the one in my wallet. Uh, Gwent does not feel like that at all. Um, around every corner, they're giving you packs of cards, and you don't even have to use them. Like, up until hour eight, I was still using the default starter deck that they hand you, um, and I had, like, a 60% win percentage. Uh, it's very strategic. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's psychological, like it's it's three rounds, so you'll try to intentionally throw one so you can get additional cards and make your opponent make a bad move first. Um, it's a lot of fun. I'm going to be streaming this more, uh, and I'm fucking addicted. The only <laughs> thing keeping this from being a, a full-on medically classified addiction is they do not have a mobile app yet. As soon as they do, uh, I'm out. <laughs> I'll quit. I'm out of the podcast. I don't have time anymore. I'll just be sitting <laughs> playing Gwent the whole time. The Switch version. Yeah, yeah Switch the Switch version. version. Oh, my God, it's so good. Uh, but that's actually all... Uh, oh, I did play some Jackbox. But, you know, it's Jackbox. Speaking, Speaking of, of Jackbox... Jackbox <laughs> um, uh, tonight, oh? everyone, so everyone yeah. knows, tonight is the postcast game of Jackbox, the Party Pack 3, and I said that as weird as fucking possible. Tonight's Jackbox, <laughs> everyone. Tonight. We're playing Jackbox. That's the um, game also, we're playing. Also, in the <laughs> chat, there is a link right now for the poll for next week's postcast game. At the end of the cast, we are calling this poll done, and we will read the verdict. So as of right now, you can still vote. So if you haven't, feel free to influence next week's postcast. Much like last week was Golf With Your Friends. Yeah. And as yeah. always, yeah. that game is pretty fun it always seems so silly going into it like man this is just gonna be kind of dull <laughs> and every time we go into it, it's always a good fucking game that's a great yeah. game and it's, it's one a, of those so games fun. where like you're halfway paying attention to what you're playing and then you're halfway paying attention to the the silly conversations and the laughing and the all that good stuff yeah. it, it, it it's all starts really... with someone making some stupid ass shot and then the bullshit just happens yeah <laughs> yep that's it that's 100%. Also, the fact that people can put hats on their golf balls now. I didn't know. Yeah, that I didn't know that. that was. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can put hats what? on your golf balls. I, yeah. I need to get. I need to get into this game now. A game. I didn't realize there were hats. A they game hats. isn't fully on Steam until you can get hats. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like I'm surprised they were able to launch Mario Odyssey outside of Steam, seeing as it's all about hat. <laughs> there, there was probably a backdoor deal with Steam. Probably. Yeah. If they just did DLC hats for mario odyssey that would be good i mean yeah, technically you buy it uh, in the game with like different actually, effects that could be kind of cool technically yeah, they they are with with the new mario dlc they're releasing three new costumes nice. uh that come with hats that is true <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's actually yeah. um there is one thing I'm just going to say <laughs> right now. Mario Odyssey has some really cool DLC. I think this is cool. A new game mode inside the game. Um, there's a new Luigi mode coming in where you get a balloon from Luigi and you just run around and you hide it somewhere really hard to find in the game. And then you upload that. And then you download other people's balloons that they hid and you try to find it. And it's a high score game based on how hard your balloon is for everyone to find. So it's all about kind of knowing the map, knowing where you can get, how to get there quickly, because there's a time limit on this. So it's really kind of fun. It'll be like a pro jump around speed run kind of thing where everyone's competing with each other. Which I think is kind of cool. 
I thought it, it was a cool it idea. Kind of cool. Yeah, it's like a community made speed run. So I thought that was really fun DLC, especially for Nintendo. That's kind of creative for Nintendo to let the yeah outside of Mario Maker, they don't let the community have a lot of influence on the game. You sir yeah. never played Animal Crossing, did you? <laughs> okay, that that is, I've already admitted that is my one blind spot when it comes to Nintendo. <laughs> I'm not an Animal Crossing dude at all. What about Pikmin 4 XD, the Gale of Darkness? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody forgets about Pikmin. I don't think I ever actually cool played anything more than I, a demo of Pikmin. I, I like Pikmin. Pikmin's <laughs> fun. Adam, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, call this real quick. Do you play anything? Okay, uh, a little bit of Rocket League, uh, and I played some Hellblade again. Finally, uh, nice. that, game, that game is so good. It's, I mean, it's. You haven't beat it yet. I, I kind of went over it a couple weeks ago when I first played it, but it's still. Just as interesting as it was the first time I played it. I played like an hour and a half, probably, maybe two hours. Uh, just really, really good game. You feel like I'm you're super close at- to the end? No. Wow. No. I'm but, super um, excited to hear. I'm, what- doing, I'm doing some stuff. I'm solving some neat puzzles and, and dealing with my mental illness and all that good stuff. Un- <laughs> unraveling the story, the backstory a little bit. Adam, is that a fireplace in your house? I just sort of yeah. realized this now. It looks like a little fire. Yeah, it's just this little that's fire, fire thing. Yeah, that's, a, <laughs> that's like a. That's what heats my house. It's like a furnace. Is, is it fire? Is there fire Hot in it? Fire. That's real fire. Wow. Real fire. Sorry, I not just even, like I just you sort of realized it's <laughs> this little fire thing going now. <laughs> not even my place has that. real that's fire. Not, yeah, that's just a box. I'm doing that with my magic. Oh, that's good. That's good magic. Call me Tim. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's not wood fire, by the way. I'm not that poor. It's gas fire. <laughs> oh, time out, time out. What the fuck are you trying to say to people that have wood fireplaces? <laughs> I'm just saying that what a wood fire fireplace is not my soul. Means is, there a, my house. is there a social scare of what kind of fireplace you have here? Yes. If, yes, if the only way to heat your house is a wood fire, <laughs> that's not generally a good thing. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Wrecked. I guess I'll give you absolutely that. wrecked. <laughs> just, you know, just fire. Sh- I'm not we're judging. Just out here, we're out here fire shaming people. It's, no, I'm not fire shaming anybody. <laughs> no, we're, we're heating I'm sympathizing. people. I'm sympathizing. There you go. With Guys, people. I live in Seattle. Oh, the way to heat my house is I've got baseboard <laughs> heating and like these little space heaters that fit inside the wall. Like it's fucking weird. Oh, I huh. actually I haven't turned them on because I didn't need to because it wasn't really that cold this winter. So boys. Well, nice. That's, That's the one thing nice about the where you're at too, is you get a l- little bit of heating for free. <laughs> I've had to run yeah. my furnace a lot this year. So fuck See, you. this is this is this is why you got to live in the mountains in an apartment and not have a stupid house. <laughs> so <you>. expensive. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we got into some Nintendo. So you guys want to jump both feet into some Nintendo real quick? Do it. Jump both it. feet with some Nintendo. Yeah. I, I'm all about jumping both feet with Nintendo. So um, some of you may have known <laughs> Nintendo had a Nintendo Direct Mini uh, this week. And I got to call this out right now. When they did the Nintendo Switch, they had a Direct. It was like this hour-long presentation, all these videos, all these different people coming out doing cheesy-ass things on stage. I like this platform they did, or the presentation they did this time. It was a quick 15-minute video. To the point, here's the game, here's the game, here's the game, here's the game. I love the format they used. No fluff, no filler. Hey, here's a a free DLC that's coming out. Hey, here's a different game. By the way, here's a different game by a totally different studio that's not Nintendo. Uh, Hey, here's an update on this thing that we're working on. I really like it. 15 minutes and you get... You know, basically the next three to six months worth of Nintendo news, it's old. This is essentially the next six months for the Switch they're planning. This has a lot of third-party games releasing, a lot of first-party games releasing, remasters releasing. So let's um, go down the list real quick. Um, Just some quick hits. Uh, Kirby Star Allies was announced to come out March 16th. It's a new... Looks pretty. New Kirby game. uh, Mm -hmm. Cool co-op features where you can kind of combine powers... Like if someone has ice and someone has water, you can like shoot water into their ice and it like does these ice crystal attack <laughs> kind of things. Kind of cool. Neat. Shoot water into your ice. Yes, yeah, shoot water <laughs> into your ice. Um, 
<laughs> Mario Tennis Aces. This is the thing I'm the yeah. most excited about. So um, Mario Tennis did look pretty cool. So judging from the reactions in this podcast right now, Josh and Adam probably didn't play a lot of Mario Tennis. And I think no, Tom I've and played, I played a shit ton of it. I no, no, you, you Mario probably, Tennis. I played, I played Wii a tennis. shit ton. <laughs> Wii Tennis yeah, was awesome. I did play Wii Tennis. Everyone if it's Wii anything tennis. like Wii Tennis, I'm, right. I'm on board. Let's go. <laughs> the Okay, Eric, you and I are going to completely, uh, you know, diverge paths here. The best Mario Tennis game was the one on the Game Boy. It was an RPG-like system with a custom character that you would level up and stat up in the Mario Tennis universe. It was so good. It was an in-depth tennis-based <laughs> RPG on the Game Boy. What I've always wanted. <laughs> it was so good. I didn't even know I wanted it until I had it. On that <laughs> shitty-ass color palette. Just what I wanted. No, um, I, I think it, I think it was the, the Game, Game Boy color, color palette. but I'll uh, I'll have to look. I think it was the Game Boy color, and not it's like still a shitty Game ass Boy. palette of color, dude. You no, don't need anything not. more than two hundred and fifty six colors. Did you see how good that Downwell game looked when I got the Game Boy color palette? It's got like three colors: yeah. green, black, white. No, it's like it's green, need anymore. green, more green, and almost white, but kind of green. Yeah, I have a okay. So, <laughs> so taking a step forward in the next one, I, I have a quick question before we even mention it, and I'm just going to go ahead and mention it, even though Eric usually mentions these things. You're Donkey done. Kong Frozen Tropics is a port of Tropical Freeze. Yes. Is it, it, why did they change the name? <laughs> why did, Why did they just rotate them on like each other? This is a port, right? Like, why did Jamba they just... Juice owns the trademark for uh, Tropical Freeze? What? Oh, so they I actually, they I, actually weird... no, I don't know. <laughs> I, like, I completely like, made that up. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, I was, was, was going to say, was I'm really like, what? <laughs> those, are, those are different things, though. That's but I don't thing. understand. It's the weirdest, like, name change. Frozen Tropics, Tropical. I don't yeah. Know. We're going to move on. <laughs> but anyway, I'm excited. I'll play it. I didn't play the other one. I actually own Tropical Freeze. Never played it. Heard it was I, pretty good. I like Country. I like Donkey Kong Country. Um, so the fact this is coming to a platform I own, I'm pretty excited about it. I'll have it. And the new character looks kind of OP. He's like this groovy Donkey Kong clone with a surfboard. And like he can just oh. use a surfboard to get over spikes and shit. Did you see that tweet by Rocket League, by the way? I know that we, we, we never get enough Rocket League talk. Uh -uh. But they uh, the, they um, they posted the picture of him and they said put this on whatever cover art or whatever cover art you want and they, they and the Rocket League people retweeted it uh, like Rocket League Psyonix retweeted it with uh, it on theirs with <laughs> on uh, the Rocket League box. Really <laughs> I, just thought, I just thought it was cool. It'd be funny to have uh, like um, Donkey Kong Country content in Rocket League. <laughs> um, I'm surprised there isn't stuff already because right now we have Mario Car, we have Luigi Car, we have the stuff that goes with those, and actually a really nice car that I've been using is the Samus Gunship Car for the Switch Edition. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, it's looks really pretty cool. cool. The only really cool. the only downside is the boost sound is so fucking annoying. It sounds oh. like a cheap, shitty ass fifties ray gun, but it's constant. <laughs> it is Maybe always there. If enough no. people complain about it, they might yeah. switch that because everybody hated the Batmobile sound initially, and now it's not. And they made it worse. <laughs> no, they didn't. It's Wah. it's any better now. Wah. It is better. That no, shit. No, no, no. <laughs> no the no, gold that, uh, is perfect. Bullshit! That, that gold explosion is trash. <laughs> it's yeah, just I, orchestral. I do not like it. It's just brass orchestral sounds. What's yes. wrong with that? And Wah. on their own, it's terrible. <laughs> no, it's not. A, it a crash like... symbol in the right place is per amazing. A crash symbol just out of fucking nowhere is awful. There's no crash. No. no it yeah, was there cool. you go. Was, there you understood what I was saying. I, I think it was cool. I thought it was cool, but it's awesome. Yeah, it sounds... I thought they they did break the actual driving sound of the Batmobile on one of the random updates. Anyway, uh, yeah. this is going yeah, off sorry, topic. We're, we're anyway, way, off the rails. way off the rails. <laughs> yeah, I think we should delve into this for the next thirty minutes. Uh, so, Team Ninjas <laughs> made Hyrule Warriors uh, for the Wii U, I believe it was. Um, it's being re-released with the definitive edition onto the uh, Switch. It's getting some um, Breath of the Wild cosmetic updates. Um. Yeah. I, if you like Dynasty I'm, Warriors, I'm actually, 
I'm excited to play this because I never actually got to play this when it came out. I don't own a Wii U. Uh, and I'm pretty sure Hyrule, Hyrule Warriors was a Wii U exclusive. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to try it out for the first time. Um, I like Dynasty Warrior games. They've never been something I went out on my way for, but... Yeah, they're good. I had a lot of fun Mindless hack and younger. slash. Dynasty yeah. Warrior games are the best intro to gaming game. There's no better game than a Dynasty Warriors game for intro to gaming. I, I will always preach that. Uh, You're instantly yeah, amazing at it. You're just like instantly yeah. amazing at it. You just like <laughs> shit on like a thousand people. You're like, gaming is amazing. I'm a god. And then you move on. <laughs> yeah. The one I had the best time with is he made a Gundam one. That was fucking awesome. Oh, nice. Nice. I, never played that. I remember seeing that. I never played it. My favorite one is a One Piece one because I like One Piece. <laughs> Self explanatory. Yeah, um, there, you go. <laughs> there were a few other ports that we didn't find notable. Um, okay. I'm checking out for the next three hours. Actually, if it's three hours, I swear to God, I will meet you guys. But Tom, go ahead and say what the last release was. It's happening. Dark Souls 1 is finally getting a remaster. And it's not only coming to the Switch. It's going to be on the Switch. It's going to release for PC. It's going to be on Xbox One, PS4. I'm sure I'm missing even more platforms. It's going to be <laughs> fucking everywhere. Um, the, the one super day. pretty. I'm, I'm buying this on the PC because you get uh, 4K resolution and 2K textures everywhere. Um, the one on the Switch is 30 FPS locked, which hurts me because all the other ones are locked to 60, but it's a well, price I'm willing to pay to play Dark Souls Tom, on the bus. Tom, the most important thing about this, the most important thing about this is that we finally, we well, we get, not finally, because we get them all the time, but we we get another day one Dark Souls release. If you've never played Dark Souls day one, you're missing out. Day one Dark Souls is the best version of Dark Souls. Just get in there, get invaded, invade people. It's freaking chaos all the way through, top to bottom, through the whole thing. And you get, uh, and you, it's like going when like an old retro movie comes back to theaters. You can go and you can see the movie as it was originally intended on a day one release. It's going to be sick. I am so excited. Also, with this remaster, um, we are getting dedicated servers. Uh, the new net code from Dark Souls 3 slash Bloodborne, which is such a fucking godsend because Dark Souls 1 net code was utter trash. Um, also, up to eight players co-op or PvP. So That's pretty sick. Can, oh, wow. You can roll eight people, Ornstein and Smo, and you might have a chance of beating them. <laughs> Maybe. Is that different if you're, than the if original you're good. release? Yes. The original What's was, the I believe, limit? locked to four. Okay. Yeah. Um, it took me three people to beat Ornstein and Smo because I'm just not any good. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fucking excited about this. And I finally get Dark Souls anywhere I am with the Switch. <laughs> Super hyped. <laughs> Okay. I might actually pick that up on PC. Yeah. It'll, it'll be worth it. Okay. So I'm pumping Super the brakes. Nice. They got their fill. Oh, yeah. Fuck so, that Josh, Sorry. about the new netcode that's no, in no, the okay. <laughs> So, there's actually another no, game that not. was a pretty big cult hit around some of our community. Uh, Payday 2 is coming to the Switch. Seems like a nice. weird fit because that's a pretty aggressive well, game for the Switch. I think they announced that a new character was coming to the Switch too, because we've known about yes. Payday 2 for a while. Yes, it was a new. Um, there's a new operator who has a um, LED mask that can change and all this weird shit. All right, was the big announcement. But still, to me, Payday 2 feels really weird on the Switch. Yeah, I. Eh. February 27th, I probably won't get it. No, I'm passing. Uh, Payday 2 got ruined for me after they went. Um, totally pay to win and then the devs brought it back and made it not shitty but nobody cared after that so um yeah. two more releases i'll throw out there i'll let tom talk a little about them if he wants but they're not big for me uh the world ends with you is coming to switch and if you have not played the world ends with you it is fantastic it was a cult hit on the nintendo ds an original ip by square enix fantastic soundtrack really cool active battle system with a really sweet control style i'm interested to see how they port this over to the switch 
Um, on the DS, you would have to control your top person on the top screen with the D-pad. And the person on the bottom screen, you would actually have to uh, draw and move them around uh, using the stylus. So it was an active, multiple battles happening at the same time kind of kind of deal. Uh, really, really cool shit. Uh, so I am super pumped to get to play that again. And the last game that we're going to call out is Wise is coming. I think to it's the Wise. Wise. The, I, the, 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 the name was pretty long. But no, why no, I think it's a core. Like, ease, ease. I, we are butchering this pronunciation, and I do not know how to pronounce that. I, uh, I watched it earlier today, and yeah. I can't remember for some reason. But it's a JRPG coming to the Switch. Uh, the world layout reminds me of Monster Hunter, but it's more of a um, hack and slashy RPG, multi people you can switch between. It looks fun. It looks fun. I'm really oh, happy kind of about big ass JRPGs on the Switch. Um, because I think it works pretty well for jump in, get a half an hour of whatever done, and then jump right back out. Yeah. Um, I might be able to finally tackle a giant ass JRPG again because so I don't have to sit there for six hours at a time. I can jump in, jump out, and take it all in bite sized chunks. Until you have a 45 minute cutscene that you can't get through because you only have 20 minutes at a time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that power button, man, that power button works everywhere. You click it, you're done. You put it on your headphones when you get back on the bus, hit the power button. Mm, video starts right back up. Mm, so good. Mm. So good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, and with that, I guess there's one more little fucking thing. Mario Odyssey gets some photo filters for all those who care. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, new filters. One of them is going like the right to my Insta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, fuck that noise. Anyway, um, we got a little more news. It's not Nintendo centric. Um, Twitch bought the exclusive rights for the Overwatch League, which by the way started this week. Neat. Uh, did yeah, you guys awesome. that's pretty did cool. you guys watch any of that? Yeah. Nope. No. So good. It Dude, was I so good. It, I completely didn't because... those casters are on point. They've been watching them they... in the preseason and you could tell. That's good. Yeah, it's that's good. they all have all the teams I'm have their own of... custom skins for uh for Overwatch League, everyone looks super sharp. Uh, nice. the, the arena looks super dope. It wasn't as big as it's the Blizzard Arena. This is in LA that this is all taking place in, mm. which is pretty cool, but it's also like kind of small. It seems really small. I don't know if that might just be me, but it's it's really, really cool, really super hype. Like the background, like the uh, that they're in is all like a big display. And it'll change like colors and like it'll show the actual uh the um like the arena across like the whole thing and it'll truncate down into like a normal display and you can see like the game right there. It's super dope. Really cool. Ooh. Check it out. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I think all of our hype on Blizzard getting into the game with some major league sports influence was well placed because out the gate, this is great. So I, I really yeah. so I, I feel two ways about this. On on one hand, you know, of course, Twitch is going to have the content, right? Uh, on the other hand, it kind of bums me a little bit that they have the exclusive streaming rights because I really, really wanted to go to the shitty bar down the street and I wanted to sit <laughs> down, have a beer, and watch my Overwatch game on ESPN 12. That's what I really want. Well, why don't they just? I mean, you can always ask the barkeep. That's what I'm gonna call him. <laughs> hey, hey, could you could you like fire that. up whatever streaming thing you use and put yeah. on put on Twitch? Yeah. No, no, over Overwatch the O V E R. Oh shit! No, never mind. I'm I'm leaving. Bye. Just bring in a Chromecast. Or yeah, just, or just walk up to the screen and like plug it in. Walk up. Yeah. You have a phone. <laughs> Just, just saying. Yeah, I'm phone. not gonna watch on my phone at a yeah. bar. That's why I go to That's a stupid. bar. Yeah. You go to a bar to watch I, TV. I love. Yeah, yeah. I love, yeah a lot of people that's go exclusively to, why I go to a bar. Yeah. A lot of people go to bars to watch sports <laughs> games. I want to watch my esports game at a bar. I think you go it's to, great. You go to a bar to watch a sports game because it's pay per view or you don't have access to it. No, no. You go to no. a bar to be social. Let's just get right. Yeah. Into it. You go to a yeah. bar to be social. You can go somewhere where they give you beer and food and snacks. Both snacks and food are the same thing, but but I'm gonna mention them twice because it's important. It's okay. Urk owns a house. 
Urk owns a house now, so he feels like he can't leave. He's got to get his money's worth out of it. <laughs> <That is good. laughs> yeah. no, I'm just explaining no. like why I went to a sports bar in the past was for pay-per-views and stuff like that. If yeah, I was going social, to watch something. It's a social place. Yeah. Go get order some food, yeah. get some drinks. Get crunk. Can we can we keep the term <laughs> barkeep though? Can we start using Yeah, that? I'm gonna call so him bartender for from sure. now on. The barkeep. <laughs> Excuse yes, I like me. That. Barkeep. <laughs> yes. Yes, barkeep. Please turn on the overwatches, please. A pint of ale for my <laughs> Give me a pint of your finest ale. <laughs> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Oh, that'd be awesome. Just <laughs> slam a coin down on the table. Bam! Like, that's Adam, not nearly you, enough. <laughs> you need to go in with dollar coins and do that accent at the pub in the green. Jesus Christ. <laughs> so yeah, good. It's an English pub it for those great. of you who don't it know. Really it would probably be would awesome. Go great. Most bar, most most barkeeps, as I'm going to continue to call them, <laughs> <laughs> would, would laugh their ass off. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, in our next news item, uh, Eric is selling his house to uh, save up some money to buy the HTC Vive Pro, which has nice. double, yes, double, ladies and gentlemen, the resolution per eye. Um, yeah. Odds are, I won't, get the, two eyes. I won't get the Pro, but to me, the biggest announcement out of this was they are actually launching the um, wireless adapter. Oh, that's pretty yeah. crazy. That's good. No it price, no date. The, yeah. The I'm, wires don't bug me, though. Like, it would be nice if it came with it, but I'm not going to go out and buy an adapter just to get rid of my wires, because then I have to worry about a battery pack and charging, and yeah, I, I just, I don't need that. And I don't have a big enough space for the wires. Yeah, I don't, I don't need that. Dude, like, I... Be like, uh, that, you could be like those old uh, squirt guns that came with, like, a backpack, and then that's what you'd live your Dude, life. I had one. <laughs> I fucking yeah. had one. They were great. So I, I have totally <laughs> gave myself whiplash pretty much with the Vive because yeah, I've yeah. stepped on the tail while I went to stand oh, up. Oh, man. <laughs> so you're, push, you're pushing <laughs> up fair, with the same... If anyone was to do that, that, that would be you. If anyone out of yeah, the group would do that. Well, I, yeah, I'm in a shooter. You got to get into it, man. I'm down on my... like. <laughs> I'm taking a knee, leaning across, and I go to stand up real quick. And the foot I'm pushing up with is the foot that's on the tail, and my head just boom. Oh, rookie that's mistakes. Amazing. That's amazing. Mistakes. I lost my headphones there. Uh, but yeah, so I'm kind of excited about that. <laughs> see, see, it's it's all over again. It's inevitable. Like, see, you're just reenacting it you right see, there. You know, it's the exact same cords. thing with regular headphones. <laughs> it's the goddamn cords. You get rid of them. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, VR Pro also comes with the capability of four lighthouses. So for you VR or uh, Vive guys, and I think even uh, Oculus for this point, when you have the lighthouses in opposite corners, you can still lose tracking if you get close to one of them. With mm. the four, in theory, it makes it very difficult to lose tracking. And these um, are the 2.0 2 lighthouses. Addi additionally, um, with four lighthouses, uh, not that any sane person would use this, but if you opened up like a VR arcade, you now gain the ability to have 10 by 10 meter play play spaces. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> fucking well, huge play spaces. To be fair, I've heard that you could actually almost push that with the current lighthouses. It's just they don't say it because of the reliability mm -hmm. factor. Yeah, I can see that. It's so kind of like the Connect, where the Connect can only track There's two no price people. Yet. But I've done Connect with five. Oh, so you okay. said yeah, there was this, no there's no price yet? No price, no release date. I was yet. gonna say it's a right. yeah. pretty high cost of entry. I'm saying yeah. this is even yeah. yeah. And and so so you're you're doubling resolution, right? Which means yeah. that your current graphics card may not be able to push yeah. this too well, depending on what you've got. So I've got a 980 Ti, and I'm sitting here wondering, I bought that for the Vive. Do I have to buy a new graphics card and a new Vive? No, no. You just need to buy two of them. Oh. There you go. All right. Just, uh, just like tie them together. Spine one, them. one, 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 uh, yeah. one, 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 ten, uh, one, ten, ten eighty so per eye. I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> just building a secondary VR rig using the same lighthouses, but doing multiplayer Gorn in the same play space. That sounds. You could also amazing. just fist fight your friends. <laughs> I'm telling yeah. you, bring your Vive over one time, and we'll stream this shit. I have enough room here in two rigs that run VR. Oh shit! Oh, that we should totally do this. We are going to break the shit out of our headsets and each other. And yeah, yeah and 
I, I'm, I'm, already... I'm not worried about that. I'm pretty cheap to fix. Headsets are not. Well, the problem is... I don't is... think that's true. I think you like should... A, a, a cast... Uh, a plastic <laughs> roll. Cast so, so you really live in America. You live in America, <laughs> so the healthcare is not cheap. Yeah. He's like I, rolling no, I, in the I'm ambulance. Own this is the vibe, okay? <laughs> yeah, this this one trip costs three hundred dollars. What's bad news for you, Wait, Tom? What, I, what kind of yeah. shitty area do you live in? Yeah, I live in it's California. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> if I put my arm out straight, mean, that's head level for you, though, Tom. So um, be ready. <laughs> <laughs> bad news I'm, for I'm you, into this. I'm so ready. All right. Um, we had a couple more news items. Um, a few weeks ago, we told you about the swatter that actually got the uh, guy killed. Uh, mm. Well, there's been an update to the story, and the dude that called in the SWAT is being charged with involuntary manslaughter. Hooray! Wow. Got him. Fuck Wreck. that guy. Yeah. He's a shit. So uh, don't do this, kids. It's really fucking shitty, and you'll go to jail. Going jail jesus that's a that, for call of duty you're going to jail for call of duty that's where it's not, not where just it's call of duty it's like a it's like a buck 50 or two dollar bet or something <laughs> shitty like that too and then he got swatted <laughs> over jesus yeah, christ that's 250 Wait. real worth it there yeah <laughs> fight uh, me irl yeah you'd probably you know you'd <laughs> never mind we're done gorn, gorn vr <laughs> in <the> room. <laughs> fight me gorn vr <laughs> and one little tad bit of news not to be left in the dust by 2K and Blizzard, EA is starting up, well, I guess they already kind of had it, but starting up their own official esports league for FIFA. This is a game that okay. already prints them money, so now they're going yeah. to make an esports league around it. Okay. Um, I don't know, it uh, could be, sure, could yeah. be good. <laughs> does, does FIFA have a good esports scene? I know it yeah. has a esports. It has a yeah, huge it's, it's following. Pretty, okay. It's, it's pretty actually good. a giant game. We don't we don't. Well, I know it's a giant. Game, any any of that news because none of us play sports e-sports. games. I mean, aside yeah. from Dota two and Overwatch and Rocket League, of course. <laughs> well, um, I play two K. I like two K. Well, I mean, you can you could probably still have a big multiplayer game without a big esports scene. So how does oh yeah? How is FIFA like okay so? If you look on esportsearnings.com, FIFA 17 is 30th on the list, making about a million dollars. Yeah. So but that's, that's without an official. What else is around it? Like what? I mean, around it is Call of Duty reference. Black Ops 2, Quake Champions, uh, FIFA Online 3, Super Smash Quake Brothers. Quake is that low? Quake 3 Arena is 34th. Uh, so the thing to remember, those earnings right now Jesus. are because it's independent Rocket League is 25th. These are independent <laughs> tournaments being done where this mm. is now going to have the power of EA and possibly one of the top grossing games in the world year over year, like every year. Yeah. This is the top selling game for EA every year is FIFA. Well, also keep in mind that these earnings, um, esports earnings, uh, dot com. It's a great site, by the way. You guys should check it out. It's pretty, pretty nifty. Um, until the money is actually earned, it's not updated. So like mm. Overwatch, for instance, they have about, looks like 5 million. You know that's gonna go up quite a bit. <laughs> what's uh, what's what's number one? Out of curiosity, huh, look, I, I think you might know that Tom. It's uh, Dota two at uh three uh one hundred and thirty one million, and then wait million. So okay, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. One hundred thirty one million. Over how what's how long? Legends, what's, right by- what's seventh? Seventh seventh <laughs> is Hearthstone. Really? What? Yeah, <laughs> really? you gotta buy those cards, man. You gotta buy those cards. They, uh, they don't actually give you a, a prize pool when you win a Hearthstone tournament. Uh, they give you a couple premium cards, and by a couple, I mean literally two. Okay. That number four, the StarCraft two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, figured you'd say I just that. figured if Fuzzy Gloves is saying something about a ranking, it's got to be StarCraft two. Yeah, it <laughs> it's could, as simple yeah. as For that. For anyone that's that's curious that doesn't feel like actually looking at the site, it's Dota two, League of Legends, Counter Strike, Global Offense. Uh, StarCraft 2, Here's the Storm, and then uh, I'll give you top 10. Why not? Counter Strike, mm. Hearthstone, Smite, uh, StarCraft, uh, Brood War, and then Overwatch at 10. Ooh, hmm. OG Star Wars or StarCraft in there. Sorry, Brood War is yeah. considering OG. Um, well, yeah, it's, it's, it, I mean, it game. is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I mean, it is. That's really impressive. H1Z1 is 22nd. That's insane. That well, they have that, the, well list. the thing is, is like w- when you go into those, a lot of them are coming down to like one big tourney. Like H1Z1 yeah, had a big invitational true. that was like 
shitloads of money, <laughs> right? Like mm-hmm. the like if you go into one of these, like if you let's just say H one Z one for instance, there's it shows the largest prize pools. And like H one Z had Fight for the Crown, which was three hundred thousand uh, dollars. The Twitch Invitational, both of them were two hundred thousand dollars. Dreamhack Winter, like all of those are like multiple thousands of dollars. So you know it really bumps you up. The thing is, is you go to you know when you really want to see the big boys, and you go into like let's say Dota for uh, Tom, you have like the top one, twenty four million. <laughs> right? <laughs> the really interesting <laughs> one to go into in this actually is CS:GO. Because they have their, you know, they're ranked third, but their prize pools overall are a lot lower. They just have a shitload of them. So, mm-hmm. you know, anyway, that's a great website. Check it out, esportsearnings.com. Halo 2 is 28th. Hmm. That's hmm. above Rainbow Six Siege, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Halo Reach, Halo 4, Team yeah. Fortress 2. It's a, it's a wacky, wacky world. Look at um, <laughs> look at the number of tournaments on the on the right hand side. It'll show you the number of tournaments they've had. Like mm. there's 864 tournaments for Dota 2 and 2,984 tournaments for Counter Strike Global Offense. Everyone so, loves their CS. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's a really but, fun site. You can see people, players, all that good stuff. Really fun. Yeah. Anyway, we were going down a little hole there, so we're gonna back. Whoa, whoa, what do you fun. mean? What do you mean? We're, we're gonna we're gonna get back on topic. Dark Souls coming out again. Okay, I <laughs> swear to God, I will meet your ass, man. No, we're not but, doing uh, this again. Let's but not anyway, this. Um, we're pretty much wrapping it up. Uh, letting everyone know, um, postcast for this week is Jackbox Party Pack Three. Just Jackbox Party Pack. Right after this cast, so get on, get on your phone and play some Jackbox Party Pack, as Tom would say. <laughs> Yeah. Um, As Tom did and say. I'll go ahead and call it next week's postcast game. Thanks to the poll, is going to be Rocket League one v one round robins. So um, that'll be next Woo. week. We'll give you some more information through the week and next week on how that's actually ran. But Rocket League next week, um, tomorrow night, week. we'll get our next poll up. So be ready for that. Um, anyway, that said, rundown. Um, you're watching us on Twitch. You should go to our. Uh, YouTube channel. We have some cool shit there. Uh, we have a Dark Souls video for those of you who like to hear Tom talk. Um, <laughs> that was recently put up there. It's pretty solid. Uh, you go to 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. If you're over there watching our podcast, um, live Twitch, 9 p.m. Eastern Time, you can come watch us Saturday nights at our Twitch page of 72 Pin Connector. And uh, Twitter, you should tweet at us. Tell us what you like, tell us what you hate. Um, at, at 72 PC podcast. And for all of you guys who like to hear audio, you can get your RSS feeds of this podcast at 72 pinconnectorcom or on any podcast distributing app you like to use. And with that, I think we have a couple call outs. Yeah, we do. Dr. Fuzzy Gloves has subscribed. Thank you. Fuzz Gloves. Thank you, Fuzz. Yeah. And Thank Villain you. Guy has subscribed for six months. Bird. Dang. Thanks, Bird. That's a lot Bird. of months. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, you're, you're not going to call out Rune Killer 13's subscription for seven whole months in a row. Who's that? Oh, I didn't see that on there. That, that, that yeah. guy's kind of a douche. I wouldn't call it out. He is. Yeah, he is. Yeah, that's fine. We should probably ban him. Yeah, yeah. he's already banned. Sweet. Get him yeah, out of here. <laughs> <We're actually not. laughs> with that everyone stay tuned we'll be back on in a few minutes with some jackbox so everyone jump in let's have some fun and with that till next week game on bye bye everybody play some dark souls what do you mean